So I come from an organization called Team Sofia in Bulgaria. And um, this is an effort that has been through many iterations. So we first started as a, again, civil society group of people caring about the city, which was not going so well, etc., etc. And so we devised a plan based on good practices in other countries, including yours. Uh, and we were thinking about devising a long-term strategy that is not mandate-based, but a vision that can unite all the political parties about how to go forward with developing the city in all sorts of aspects, based on data, of course. Um, so um, this was pitched to the municipal government at the time with a lot of public pressure, and they complied at the end to run with it. They funded uh, some part of the efforts. I don't, mm, I don't <laughs> think <laughs> just press to, to see Yeah, I don't think the English version will support everything I'll show, but let's leave that until the end. Uh, okay. Anyway, what happened was this. <clears throat> we spent about three years making this strategy. It was called Vision Sofia of 2015. Um, and we focused on three pillars of how to do it. First of all, data. So it needed to be very evidence-based. Um, in order to know, you know, where you want to go, you want to know where you are at the moment. And so you have to measure it in some quantifiable ways. Uh, there was not a lot of data about <laughs> Sofia. Uh, we managed to produce some, gather some, obtain some. It was very difficult. Uh, so the municipality, as I told you, funded the effort. But, um, well, in some sorts, it was sabotaging it all the way across. <laughs> <laughs> so. Even though the effort to obtain the data, for example, was paid for by the municipality, only about half of the municipal units complied with our request for cataloging the data. Uh, so despite uh, official orders by the mayor, etc. Uh, so the first thing was data. The second thing was inclusivity. We wanted this to be a very consensus-based vision. Because we believe in sustainability. Like if you enforce ideologically or what have you, how to develop um, any sort of aspect in the city, and many interested parties do not agree to a significant degree that this becomes unsustainable because the next political change reverts it back. And so we involved, uh, we often say about 10,000 people in the process, so that was very successful, all sorts of NGOs, academia, businesses, uh, public officials, of course, national level, etc. Uh, and then the third pillar was uh, some sort of a holistic approach. So I don't know about your cities, but in Sofia, um, city planning is very silo-based. So you have the strategy for the green greenery and the ecology, you have the strategy for traffic, you have the strategy for housing, but they don't talk to each other, like they're not coordinated in any significant degree and they're not measured correctly. Because if I set up a goal uh, in one of these strategies and a similar goal in another, they often have very diff different indicators, ways of measurements, goals. So sometimes they even contradict. Right? So it, it was a little bit ridiculous. So we focus very much on this holistic approach. The city works as a system, that everything influences everything else. And we developed some pretty novel uh, like um, tools about how to teach people this. Uh, we made some sort of a game uh, that puts you in the shoes of a policymaker. And once you take a decision, you see the effects, and now you have to solve them as well. Um, so anyway, this effort ended in 2019. And, and then that was um, the start of the pandemic, early 2020. Um, this was used very successfully by the municipality to postpone <laughs> accepting yeah. this strategy. Why? Well, obviously, we were very objective, because we were civil society people, and so we wanted to very neutral, neutrally positioned, like without any political agenda, to point out these are the problems, these are the good practices, this is how to solve them, this is how to set up the goals. Uh, for any politician in power in a municipal government, this is not always convenient, uh, especially as our Italian friend said, exposing the data about what's going on is also not very convenient. And so, not publicly, but with all means accessible, the municipality, mm, was postponing, like working around, etc. Et so it took about a year and a half, I think, <laughs> until it was officially accepted, and only the strategic part, but not the operational part, which rendered it pretty much meaningless. 
Um, and so at that time, uh, the same core team um, managed to win a, a competition about running the planning facility of the municipality. We reformed it significantly, like implemented the same sort of approaches in the planning facility. Again, the municipality didn't really recognize these efforts and uh, all the proposition, the proposals, the planning uh, just went nowhere. And so our next iteration, which is the going on right now, we um, decided to step it up a, li a bit politically. Uh, so we are thinking that a political change seems to be necessary in order to have the will to implement any sort of changes towards a better city. Uh, now, this does not mean that we made a party, even though in some other cities, uh, also in Eastern Europe, this has been the case. We didn't make a party. We are rather trying to still keep it objective and neutral and talk to the opposition parties and provide them with policy, with uh, incentives, with uh, some sort of mediation that we hope to be very good at about uniting together and um, providing this sort of very strong commitment about implementation of uh, this strategy and any other meaningful agenda uh, that is objectively evidence-based about how to go forward. So this is our project. This has been our, um, yeah, <laughs> this has been our um, work with the municipality. And I wanted to show you about measurement. I don't know though if the English version supports it. These are just some pictures. So I'll just have to go back <laughs> to the non-English version. Uh, because I believe every strategy needs to be quantified very well. And so we spent a lot of effort, these are the goals. We spent a lot of effort trying to first connect all the different goals together. Second of all, provide uh, indicators everywhere. So on each of these goals, you can see um, some of them are obviously yes, no, some of them are quantified, but some indicators. So we. Are, we can very well tell the impact that all of this has. This is close to zero because <laughs> none of these indicators has moved so much. Uh, but we believe very firmly in um, in data, in in, in evidence-based policy making. And one positive thing about the pandemic was, well, obviously the recovery fund of the <laughs> European Union, because this then some parts of our team, myself included, were able to then convince the national government to use the recovery fund and implement our sort of, a sort of, you know, based on the data spaces initiative in the European Union, um, very uh, data-based monitoring in real time, transparent for everybody. Um, this is a project under our recovery fund and uh, I hope we can help bring it to completion. Anyway, thank you.